live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2016. Brought to you by AWS and its ecosystem partners. Now, here's your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Media's production of AWS reInvent 2016. Worldwide leader in enterprise tech coverage, live tech coverage that is. Really happy to have on the program a returning guest, Stephen Mee, who's the CEO of Aviatrix, and a first time guest, we've got Gaurav Jetty, who's the Senior Director of Cloud at Kronos. Gentlemen, thanks so much for joining us. Great to be here, thanks for having us. All right, so, so, so Gaurav, you know, let, let me start with you. It, it, t tell us a little bit about, you know, tell us who Kronos is, you know, I'm familiar with them some, uh, you know, Boston-based company, I'm from the Boston area, uh, but uh, in, in your role there. Yeah, Kronos is a, is a human capital management uh, software organization, predominantly focusing into workforce management solutions from timekeeping to scheduling, and uh, we make people pay, you know? It's a payroll system software, so. Predominantly based in Boston, 36 year old organization, and uh, you know, doing great. All right, and so Steven, uh, you were on the program with us back at DockerCon, yes. uh, you know, AWS big show, I called it, it's the Super Bowl of cloud this week here. Uh, so, you know, how's the AWS uh, play for, for Aviatrix? AWS is one of our biggest partners, and of course the reInvent show is the, is the Super Bowl of almost the whole IT industry right now. Amazing how there's about 32,000 people here and the energy is fantastic. Well, it's our biggest show because Aviatrix is a, is a partner of, of AWS, and as one of the partner bundle solutions that was announced today, we announced the secure remote access bundle with VPCs, along with Megaport and AWS. So we're really excited to be here to support that. All right, so let's talk about your adoption of cloud. So, you know, Kronos has existed, you know, longer than we've been talking about this cloud thing. Uh, I think you said you've been there about seven years. So talk to us a little bit about, about your cloud journey, what you guys use, how you use it. Do you still have any internal IT? Uh, what, what, what's the environment look like? Yeah, I think it's very interesting, uh, you know, uh, organization like Kronos, who's been with the industry from 35 years, has transformed from an enterprise of an on-prem model to a cloud model. So as like typical organization, we started with uh, our own uh, you know, managed service cloud, then started with our own private cloud, which still we have, but then we started thinking you know, that we have to go global and we have to expand. And then you know, it is an opportunity where we have to you know, think about other uh, hybrid cloud models too, where you know, uh, AWS and other cloud came into uh, you know, one of the handy layers. And uh, we are, uh, in a simple word, kind of a hybrid cloud model where we have our own private cloud, plus we have a kind of a public cloud combinations. And a lot of acquisition, what you do, you know, it comes with the back of public cloud too. So we kind of in a flux of both the layers. And AWS plays a, a great role, uh, you know, in terms of solving those capacity issues which Kronos require. All right, so, so one of the challenges when you kind of look at, you know, whether you call it hybrid or multi-cloud world, you've got lots of, there's some challenge, you know, there's management and, you know, networking. So, you know, how, how does your company look to, you know, solve some of those issues and, you know, dealing with multiple environments? So, uh, you know, uh, thanks to, you know, Aviatrix, uh, I must say that, you know, uh, typically when you have a private cloud, you would like to design what you want. You know, you have different vendors available, but when you come to public cloud, there is a niche set of offerings which are missing. And I think uh, Aviatrix played a huge gap there in terms of you know, not only meeting our internal user base with the SSL offerings, but also about you know, the external customer base with private VPN layer solutions, which typically, you know, majority of the public cloud providers, you know, they, they rely more on marketplace. So we found Aviatrix greatly fit into that model and fitting the gaps of private versus cloud when you're going there. Yeah, Stephen, I want your opinion on this. I love when I talk to your team about your solution. The term they throw out is it's edgeless when you talk about networking. You know, security. There's no such thing as the perimeter anymore. Networking. You know, Amazon VPC goes from you know my my private cloud environment up to the public cloud. You know, talk is—is is this a typical use case that you see for your environment? Uh, and uh, you know, maybe explain that kind of edgeless a little bit. Absolutely. So enterprises are adopting the public cloud, which means moving workloads into the public cloud. But those workloads need to talk to their data centers to get data, centralized services, or uh, have other applications that they need to talk with. And so there's a, a hybrid connection that's made, and that is touching the edge routers in most cases. 
Now with our solution, uh, AVH just offers a, a virtual machine that is uh, highly available, but does not touch the edge router. And so therefore, you don't have to uh, affect any of the data center network where it allows your company to be cloud aware with a simple VM. And that makes the, the uh, hybrid connections. Bring us inside a little bit. Uh, you know, when, when you chose Aviatrix, who drove that decision? Who's the administrator? How does that fit between boundaries of kind of, you know, the network team, is there a developer team, is there a cloud team? You know, where, where does that fit in the environment? So I think it's very interesting to say, so almost a year back, uh, when we were getting into a public cloud journey, we find our gap list, you know, that what are the areas we have to investigate. So one of my uh, architect, he was visiting the reInvent, and that's where we met Aviatrix, and then they found the solution. Uh, so one of my network architect, he was having the basic requirement, what we require, as Stephen has rightly pointed out. You know, there are some gaps where, when you're trying to move from an enterprise for private to a public cloud, there's a lot of resistance. So when you're going to public cloud and then to uh, a third party vendor, your architects would not like to go away. They would like to control. So when our architect came here, he found that this is a kind of a solution where it is public cloud aware, it is still owned by you, so the, it was an architect decision who, who made the decision based on the use cases, but now the solution is so simple, I would say, you know, a two, three years resource of, of networking engineers managing that out. And the developers, and I would say the other consumers who are leveraging, it is encapsulated to them. They don't even know about what it is. What they see, they're sitting at their office, and they connect to cloud, and they don't have to go with any gimmicks of you know, VPN, proprietary VPN software. It's very easy, you know, it, I would say, I think, uh, it's very quiet and very very easy from them. You know, they don't even know what it is happening. But at the end of the day, it's been uh, connected, well secured, and then giving us a solution what we require. So to answer your question, architects designed it one time, engineers are managing it, and consumer is not even aware of what is happening. Yeah. So Steven, maybe you could speak on that. Where do you typically find, where's Aviatrix kind of getting in the door? Who's the owner? You know, is there any kind of retooling that needs to be done between you know, network developer uh, and uh, kind of the management and cloud teams? Yeah, it's, it's really depending on the stage of the, the company itself. Uh, some have a, a cloud team, like in this case, and, and they're driving to the architecture associate and they work with the network teams. Other times we have the, the networking teams that are, are driving the discussion and uh, we're providing providing them with point and click uh, capabilities to, to leverage the public cloud and support the cloud teams. It's a big shift that's happening within the IT industry, which is pretty exciting. Yeah, the, the other thing I want to follow up with you on, on, on Steven, is the promise of cloud is supposed to be, uh, we're reducing friction uh, oh, yeah. in the environment. I should be able to deploy things faster. Networking has traditionally been, uh, you know, it's one of those bottlenecks. It's, I'm a networking guy by background. Uh, the joke always is, in networking is there's no such thing as eliminating a bottleneck, you just move it. So, uh, you know, when you talk about deploying solutions, you know, networking has still been one of those environments that, oh, I need to get the guy involved and I, I, I need to, you know, plug something yeah. in or everything. Yeah. So, how, how do solutions like yours and partnering with companies like Amazon, uh, you know, help solve that issue? Right, so the cloud is fundamentally made up of compute storage and networking, and we'd say that the the compute and storage is absolutely elastic and, and readily available. However, to network a data center to the cloud or branches to the cloud, it takes weeks if not months to get that to work. So the networking is, is still behind in that. We're kind of still marred in the late 90s, or early 2000s. And I think that that's because uh, there's new technologies that need to be native, cloud native technologies like Aviatrix. And what we try to do is make the, the networking as dynamic and disposable as the compute and storage. And that's the, the edgeless technologies that we provide, as well as the secure, secure remote access bundles to the VPCs that we announced with, with uh, uh, Megaport and AWS today. All right, so, so Gaurav, beyond just Aviatrix, you, you could talk about them if it makes sense, but when, when you look at cloud, you use a number of solutions out there, what are you looking for in the marketplace? What would help you and your company kind of work better, uh, new enhancements you'd like to see, changes you, you'd like to see in the environment? Yes, yeah, so if I really see from a Kronos as a business point of view, you know, the typical challenge for enterprises like us, you know, we are not startup, so we are not running a true cloud native product. We carry legacy back. Coming to public cloud, we look that you know, the logos what we have used in private cloud are available in the marketplace so that A, the skills we have, they can easily transform themselves and, and understand that. B, the migration is easy. Now, if you really ask me you know, what exactly we would like, like provider like AWS and other public cloud to, to build, 
I think they need to build a basic offering for enterprises where the migration and, and you know, moving to public cloud becomes so easy. Because if you really see public cloud is still made, built based on the startup culture, and when enterprise comes, it took a lot of time for them to transform because you're technically giving away the control and governance to them, which is a little difficult, but I think that transformation has to happen so that you can move fast. So I, I would say I think these are the key points uh, which we considered and when we, we made the decision. Yeah, I, I think you bring up a great point. Uh, we, we actually, uh, we've been hearing a lot of people talk about, uh, you know, you know, how, how do we move? Is it, you know, we understand, you know, applications born in the cloud, you know, great for Amazon. Microsoft's done really well with, you know, sassifying a lot of their environments. Uh, I had a chance to talk to the, the cloud migration services at Amazon and they were like, it, it, it's the, uh, you know, six R's. It's, you know, you can, you know, you know, re-platform, re, you know, all these different, do you, do you just lift and shift? Do you lift, tinker and switch? Do you completely change it? Do you retire it? Do you move it? I mean, it, it's complicated, but, you know, the, 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 the claim that Amazon had is they've, they've done more, you know, data center reductions and moves of data than anyone out there. Um, so, you know, they've got best practices, they've got partners, they've got people they've been working with. So, uh, you know, I, I, I guess they, they, they probably say, you know, talk to your rep and hopefully they can have it. But uh, I, I definitely heard your pain um, from plenty of customers uh, and that's why we're still in the kind of early part of the adoption uh, from the enterprise, not, you know, we've only been doing this 10 years. It takes a while for, uh, you know, some of this to, 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 to move as an industry. So, yeah, are you hearing good things from Amazon? Do they listen to what, what you're telling them? Uh, you, you know, do you feel they're responsive? Well, absolutely. I think they're the number one leader and, uh, uh, Really you see, I think when, when I came here, it's, it's my first time I've been here, and I see a, a combination of enterprise and SMB customers, you know, which help us feel more confident, that I'm sure they have a secret recipe which is working for them, and I'm sure it is going to work for us also, because to your point, there is no one side fit model for all. Everyone has their own bags. They just need to see that how they're going to fit into, and I would say I think Amazon has been very simple and very easy to work in that model. Uh, uh, definitely, there are areas of improvement, but I, I think they know, and they're working on it, and that is the reason, you know, coming here, listening other customers' uh, you know, uh, stories, how they have reached here, is definitely going to help us also to make the decisions easier. All right, so Stephen, uh, you know, as we're getting towards the end of, of the time we have. Talk about, you know, what's been happening with Aviatrix, and what can we expect to see from you guys going forward? Yeah, so there, there's two things I wanted to uh, talk about. One is, uh, you know, as people develop more applications and put them in the cloud, then people need to have the secure remote access. Uh, what, what folks are using is mainly jump hosts and bastion stations, and uh, that's a DIY type of approach. With Aviatrix and AWS and Megaport, it's now a, uh, a single cloud formation template with one single click. They can now have secure remote access to the VPCs for all of their employees, contractors, it's uh, profile-based access. Now, the one thing that we're excited about that's moving on next is we're going to be uh, providing scale-out uh, IPsec tunneling. And uh, that's uh, uh, already going to early customers. And what that means is instead of having one instance to another instance levels of, of bandwidth, we can now have a cluster of instances talking to another cluster of instances across regions, across clouds, and from your on-prem to your, your public cloud. So we think this is something that's very innovative and that, that uh, folks with big data requirements are, are really going to find useful. All right, uh, Karav, uh, I want to give you the last word. You know, what brings you to come uh, to, to an event like this? What do you learn from it? Uh, and what, what would you share with your peers that couldn't make it to the show? So two things. Uh, one, I think uh, the transformation which is going around across the world is actually not happening. Uh, it's really, it's real here when you see, and you know, to your point, a kind of a Super Bowl atmosphere. Everyone is looking to transform. And when you come here in such events, you see the future. You see those people who has done it. I think it helps you learn, and you can go back and see, you know, there are some things which you can do and fail fast. And uh, second part, I think the way you come here, you know, to learn more about new technologies, which you can, which can help you to incorporate into your business and get more efficiencies and uh, a better customer insights and customer efficiencies. That's what we do. All right, Stephen, uh, g g give you the final word, uh, you know, at the beginning of the show here, so probably haven't gotten to talk to too many customers yet, but what, what are you hoping to get out of the, 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 the show this week? Well, as a, as a partner of AWS, we really want to support the whole ecosystem uh, and customers that are trying to adopt the public cloud. And so uh, we just look to uh, uh, have a lot of great conversations, network with, with uh, the whole ecosystem, and uh, you know, continue to support this movement that's happening uh, with public cloud. 
All right, well, Stephen, Gaurav, thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from AWS reInvent 2016. You're watching theCUBE. Thanks.